y'all, I want you to show you love for the last comedian. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? For the Laugh Hallelujah Mega Comedy Jam finale. Y'all ready? You have seen this brother on HBO. You have seen this brother on BET's Comic View. He is the new host of God Ain't No Joke. All the way from Washington, D.C. Please stand to your feet. Show some love for my friend, my brother, Mr. Mike Washington. My name is Mike Washington. I still work in secular clubs. It, I just do my thing, you know what I mean? And, and I, I try to make other people, you know, um, instead, of, instead of being intimidated by them watching them on stage doing what they want to do, you know, I try to create a, a, an atmosphere where do what I'm doing. You know, doing Christian comedy for me is letting people know that there are other things that you can do as outlets, you know, to release yourself. I'm, I don't have no high blood pressure, no stress. You know what I mean? When I'm on stage, um, it ain't Bible study. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a comic. You know, like I came to make you laugh, and that's what I'm doing. Right. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> y'all look good out here. This is nice. I'm going to say, look, let me start off to God be the glory. I'm glad y'all came out to support this. This is a beautiful thing. And yeah. So and then that's going to be like it for me with those kind of statements, because I'm going to tell you right now, I, I'm, I'm like the Kurt Franklin of Christian comedy. You're going to have to warm up to me. You remember when, when Kurt first came out, they didn't accept him. You know, people like, that ain't no Christian. What is he? That ain't no, what kind of gospel? What? what? <laughs> now, every other artist is like Kurt. I'm going to let you know right now, this ain't no Bible. I ain't going to teach you nothing. You ain't going to learn nothing from me. You ain't going to remember nothing. <laughs> I ain't got no scriptures. I ain't got no quotes. I'm just, I'm just going to, you know. I mean, go to church on your own. That's what I'm telling you. That's all. I'm a, <laughs> seriously. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm serious. I'm getting old. I'm telling you right. I'm getting old. Music is changing. The older I get, the scarier your music is, especially the secular music. It's scary. It sounds like everybody want to fight. I'm serious. You know, you listen to music, you're like, what, 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 who, who fighting now? Me and my son are sitting in the car at the light this summer. We're just chilling. You know, we had a red light, you know. I don't know if the brother was talking to me or Sanders like, move, get out the way, get out. I just went right on through the light. I said, I don't know if you're talking to me or if you're singing, but I figure a bullet, you know, would be more expensive than a ticket. Let me, let me just go on through the light. Let me get out his way. I don't know. The music has changed. I don't care what they say, he can cut Michael Jackson's whole nose off, I'm still buying his CD. That's my man, I'm telling you. Everybody on Michael Jackson, man, Mike, I knew Mike wasn't going to jail. Mike is my man. I'm saying, I don't think he messed with the kids. He got more things to do than to mess with the kids. Believe that, I'm telling you. Mike got plenty of money. I know he got plenty of money. Knew he wasn't going to jail. From the top, anytime you can come to court and have your pajamas on, I know you ain't going to, you ain't going to jail. I was, I was a little bit late, um, I just, I didn't want to be any later. I mean, it looked like you just got through doing what we accused you of doing. <laughs> Pajamas on. Mike got plenty of money. You can tell by the animals he got at the ranch. I'm serious. You can't go to Petco and buy zebra food at Petco. <laughs> Michael Jackson got money. He getting that straight out of Africa. He getting this shipped to him. Michael Jackson got money. I love Michael, I don't care what they say about Michael Jackson. That's right, I love Michael Jackson. TV commercials make me sick though, you know that? Every other commercial is about a pill that's gonna help you with something wrong with you. Most of the pill has side effects worse than what you taking the pill for. <laughs> You take a pill for one thing, you got three more things wrong with you. Your stomach was just hurting. Now your ears bleeding, your nose won't stop running, your throat is scratchy, but your stomach don't hurt no more though. They got a pill to lose weight. It's 100% guaranteed to cut the weight off, but the side effect is worse than being fat. The side effect is all day long, you have an uncontrollable oily discharge in the back of your pants. I mean, you look good, but you stink. That ain't no trade-off. You had the company party, 
You having a good time, they keep walking by. What is that smell? You know what it is, you just jealous. I thought you had some devil eggs in your pocket. You know I ain't got no devil eggs in my pocket, you just jealous. Y'all crazy. <laughs> oh my. I'm, I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm going to tell you something right now. Every time I travel, they always say, how did you survive? I'm like, how did I survive? What are, you, what are you talking about? You know, I used to think they were talking about, you know, we, we was called the murder capital of the world. I was never proud of that, though. Never. I'm serious. You know, they was killing people every night, sometimes in the daytime. I was like, what are y'all trying to do? Get into the Guinness? What, 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 what's up with this? But it wasn't that. They were talking about the, the events that had happened in the past years. You know, we had, you know, you know, Bin Laden, his boys flew through. The snipers. And they say they caught Saddam. Saddam, wow, said that they say, he said, he was going to kill us all with some gas, you know, that they never found. Okay? But to me, it was kind of comical, you know, watching. The news reporters talking about what we should do, you know, tape up your air conditioners with plastic, put duct tape around them, you know, get some gas masks. Gas masks. First of all, black people, we too cool to wear the gas mask the right way. You know you ain't gonna have it on right, gonna have it on sideways, backwards. You're not gonna wear that unless it has some, some kind of name on the front. Can't be no plain gas mask. Y'all got any Donna Karen gas masks? The snipers had everybody on lockdown. Some of y'all probably was scared here and knew he wasn't nowhere near here. Just please, Jesus, let them catch the snipers. Everybody in D.C. changed what they were doing. Wasn't no regular routine. You know, and they were telling you stupid things. Now, first of all, I knew he was a bad criminal when the rest of the criminals was scared to commit their crime. See, for 30 to 45 days, the rest of the crime had come to a halt. That's a bad criminal when you got the other criminal scared to do what they do. <laughs> Lord Jesus, please, y'all need to catch the sniper. He, I can't even sell my dope. <laughs> Crazy. That's a bad criminal right there. Had us doing stupid things on the street. They were reporting on the news, don't walk on a straight line, walk zigzag. You know how stupid you look walking zigzag? And everybody ain't heard the news yet. Hey, my son said, Dad, what you doing? You better do this too. You know the sniper is still loose. I'm at the gas station. I zigzag from my car to the window to pay for the gas. I'm, I'm zigzagging. I started doing this, I got tossed out. I'm like saying, you know, I got, I got to throw them all. The guy in front of me turned around and said, what are you doing, what are you doing? I know you taking too long, I know that. I'm buying cigarettes and now let's buy some gas. It's a gas station. I hope you mess around and shoot over here and miss me and hit you. Then I zigzag back to my car. When I got to my car, I noticed my wife was leaning down in the car like this. She, she leaning back in the car, looks at my, are you drunk? You know I don't drink, are you sleepy? You got the seat leaning back, you are cheating. Give him two people to shoot at. We here together. I'm glad they caught the sniper. My knees still hurt from that old silly mess. No, he's shooting people. Tell you right now, you want to stop stuff like that? That crazy brother then put gas on his ex-wife and set her on fire. I'm telling you right now, the devil's a liar. Had I been a judge, I stopped crazy crimes. No raping nobody. You can set nobody on fire. You know why? Because I'm going to give it back to you. And I got a Christian heart, but I'm telling you right now, you want to stop all this nonsense out here? Stop people from raping women out there, minding their own business, trying to come home from work, going to pick the kids up or whatever they're doing, and you rape and kill somebody, you ruin their family, and you come in my courtroom, put them over there. You rape somebody, and go get the donkey. That raping gonna stop today. You go in that room and you know anybody have no party? The donkey is not there for donkey rides. 
You won't be on his back. Yeah, hey, brothers out there about to raise somebody here. Is that a donkey? I'm telling you, stop this nonsense. I'm glad they caught the snipers. Ben Laden and his boys had me messed up for a long time. I'm telling you, I fly way too much for them to be playing with planes like they playing with them planes. I'm telling you right now. I used to go right to sleep on the plane. I'm sorry, Marcus, Willie, Deborah, Miss Vicky, they go right to sleep on the plane, not me. I don't blink my eyes when I go on the plane, understand me? I give everybody on the plane the wide eye. <laughs> well, I'm looking at, I'm looking at you. Matter of fact, turn around and mind your business. Don't turn around and look at me. Look frontwards. Don't look at me back here. Mind your own business. I'm looking at everybody. I don't let nobody sit beside me on the plane. I buy all the tickets in my row. I buy the window, the middle, and the aisle. I'm like, look, get out my row. This is my whole row. Get out of here. Nobody gonna get stabbed in this row. No, I don't want no more peanuts. I need some more light over here, please. I had to do that. Got on the plane one day, this little boy was sitting beside me. He was old looking in the face. I thought he was a midget. It scared me so bad I didn't know what he was. You know, you know, because Bin Laden said he was coming back with some little tricks. I thought this could be one of his little tricks right here. I said, look, I don't know who you are, but I know what you will be. It's punched in the face like a man. You sitting there grinning and playing. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna punch your face like a man. I'm telling you right now. I'm scared, I'm nervous, you touching me, and ask me all those stupid questions, getting up, using the bathroom too. Sit in your seat, please, I'm telling you. I'm gonna punch your face like a man, I'm telling you. Ask me, can I put his bag in the overhead? No, I can't put your bag in the overhead. You knew you couldn't put it in when we got on the plane. I mess around, reach up on my tippy toes, and you cut me across my stomach. That's a midget trick right there. You better sit still. He sitting up in a chair, wiggling his little midget foot around, trying to hypnotize me. I don't even know him. I mess around and look at your foot and get hypnotized, and you cut me across my throat. That's another midget trick. Stop playing before I smack in your mouth. I'm telling you. I'm scared. I'm nervous. Get out of my row. I'd have been fighting on the plane. I know before. I'd have started the fight. I'm serious. I ran in the back, took all my clothes off, and just filled my socks up with sodas and started busting terrorists in the head. Land the plane. Land the plane right now. What are you doing? What are you doing? You got a boss cutting the knife? I got a sock with a soda in it. You're going to land this plane. I'm going to cut your head from the fifth row. Land this plane. Ladies, y'all want to help? We can't help. I think we can help now. I know you can. This is a motivator. This will make you do some things you didn't know you could do. Get up there. Land this plane. You ain't gonna fly no plane, no building. With me on it, I don't do nothing? You crazy. They were just as scared as, as the passengers. I know they was. You know how I know they were? They were nervous. That was their first time doing that. You know how I know that? Because you don't practice nothing like that. You understand me? You don't run the building one time and say, okay, now we ready. That one time was the last time. They was nervous too, you understand me? That's right, shucks. Thought they had a strategic plan, you know, you know. They had a strategic plan, all right. I don't trust hearing no foreign voice at the controls. I got some foreign friends, I love foreign people, but you not gonna be flying no plane, I'm on. <laughs> and I just sit there and listen to you. Break up all your language and everything. You know, I, I, I want to hear an American voice. I don't want to hear no mumbling and stumbling. I can't talk that good myself. I know I want to understand everything you're saying. I want to hear, welcome to flight 1515. I'm your captain, John Wright. I want to hear no, welcome to flight 1515. Get my bags. Get my bags. And you and this, mi this midget, and open the door. Sir, you are naked. I'm going to put my socks on when I got outside. Open this door. I'm telling you. Yes, indeed. You're going to land this plane. <laughs> Said they had a strategic plan. They knew what to hit. They knew what not to hit. It was certain things they better not have hit. I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you right now, you know, they hit the Pentagon, you know, God bless their souls. You know, they, they hit the World Trade Center, you know, you know, certain things that they bet they had hit. Like in New York City, they know white people love the Statue of Liberty. Don't, don't, white people love the Statue That's right, white people love the Statue of Liberty. Had they messed around and hit that Statue of Liberty and knocked that torch out of her hand, they'd have ran out of bombs bombing them back. They knew what not to hit. Sucks. I don't know. I love white people, I'm telling you right now. You know why? White people get animals and teach them tricks that we don't even think about. Like, like they'll get a dog and teach them how to catch a frisbee. You don't know nobody black who can fly a frisbee to their dog and he catch it. <laughs> that takes a lot of effort. White people are diligent. They'll be out there every day until that dog learn how to catch that frisbee. Then they have a frisbee competition and win thousands of dollars. <laughs> For white people, that's their tricks. Black people is either too hot or too cold <laughs> to be playing with a dog with his frisbee. I'm telling you, it's, it's like, you know, huh? Okay, come on, we do it tomorrow. It's too hot out here. We do that tomorrow. <laughs> you better come in here, I'm telling you. You'll be out there. White people take their dogs with them to stores and take them right in the store with a sign on the door that says, no pets allowed. They'd be like this. Come on, we're only going to be here a little while. Mind y'all business. <laughs> Black people, our dogs will run outside and jump in the car. <laughs> You like this, I'm gonna leave you in the car, I'm gonna say that right now, you ain't going to the store with me. And I ain't cracking no window because somebody might steal my car. <laughs> it's a hundred out here, you know what's gonna happen inside that car. You, now, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna be doing a lot of that. White people put their dogs in dog competitions. Black people won't do no stuff like that, I'm serious, I'm serious, you know. Take six months to a year to train the dog to do the tricks. Come on, man. Come on, man. Bro. We think of stupid tricks. Ain't no stupid tricks. White people buy the dog. Cost three thousand dollars to enter the contest. Now that we don't have the money, but you know, when you win a ribbon, <laughs> black people, we thinking three thousand. We can go to the dollar store and buy a whole bag of ribbons. <laughs> You can be any color ribbon you want, believe that. <laughs> White people had a dog groomed up, it looks perfect. It, I'm serious, we watching the dog commentary, he got my buddy, man, what kind of dog is that? Same kind you got, he just take care of his. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta be dressed up to be in the competition, dressed up. Not that black people won't dress up, but we'll dress up, but we don't play with no dog. When we put our good clothes on, the dog knows. <laughs> I better go lay down. <laughs> Teach him early. When we first get him, baby, come on, we gotta go to the show. Go lay down. <laughs> baby, we gonna be. <laughs> did you kick him? Yes, I did, but look how he laying down. See how he's beautiful. He look, he sleep, don't he? Look at him. <laughs> you are a good dog. You done broke my leg. <laughs> White people be in the competition, be dressed up. Dog looking pretty, they say, Contestant number 17, that's us. Oh, 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 back, 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 Sit, stay, we gon' win. <laughs> that black people, come on, you know how we are. I'm gonna tell you right now, first of all, we gonna try to teach him the tricks the same day as the contest. <laughs> come on, remember this morning? Ah, you better come out with, you better, you better come out. I'm a rise like a pony, you better come on, stop, stay, stay, sit. Ah! Oh, his leg, but who broke his leg? <laughs> Go buy a dog cat, somebody black or white. They got everything. White people have everything you're supposed to have. Shot records, got papers to show who the mother and father dog is, so you know what you got. Not us. We just trying to get rid of the puppies. <laughs> Have they had their shot? Shot! Ain't nobody been shot in here. I'm telling you right now, don't start no mess. <laughs> well, 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 do you have papers to show who the mother? Look, I had my dog in the backyard. Another dog jumped on the fence and attacked my dog. Now I got puppies running around. You won't want to not. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if he's gonna, he gonna be dead if you don't get him out of here. That's what he's gonna be. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
This white girl came to DC, went in our zoo, found her in the lion's cage the next day, ate her hands off, mauled her face so bad you couldn't identify her. Found a purse in the lion's cage with identification in the purse. They said they don't know if it's her. Who else purse is it? <laughs> the lions ain't got no purse. <laughs> then they tried to take off and say she was kind of retarded. I don't care if you all the way retarded. They bring retarded kids on class trips to the zoo every day. Even they know not to get that close. <laughs> There's always a hard head one. Soon they get off the bus, but Jonathan, don't get that close. That's my friend. Here, yeah, kitty, kitty. He said, raw to me. He's not my friend. He said, raw. And they sweet. They don't, they don't know. They don't know the better. They be this close in your face. Breath stink. He, he said, "Whoa!" He be like, "Hey, don't don't do that." <laughs> Did your mother give you those mints? Don't do that, Jonathan. Please. He said, "Whoa!" You gonna make me spit up? <laughs> Remember yesterday? I spit up a little bit yesterday. Pick your helmet up and get back in line. <laughs> he said, "Whoa!" I'm sorry, so, didn't I tell you from the beginning, like Kurt Frank? Okay. In Africa, to be a man, you have to kill a lion. Whew. That's a task. Just to be a man, kill a lion. I'd have never been a man. That's why so many African cab drivers at the airports. No, mama, please listen to me right now. Please listen to me right now. Please, I don't, look, listen to me. No, I can't do it. Please listen to me right now. I can't do it. I know my mother and my father want me to do this, but I cannot do it, please. I know my brother is still missing right now. Please listen to me. Please. Please, mama. Please, please, mama. I want to honor you, but please listen to me right now. Please, I can't do it. No raw for me, you. Please. I love y'all. My name is Mike Washington. Hope y'all had a good time. To God be the glory. Thank you. My favorite part of the show was Michael Washington when he was running and talking about zigzagging from the snipers in Washington, D.C. That was hilarious. It was, it was wonderful. We had a blast. We laughed so hard that I cried. I couldn't sit still in my seat. It was a fantastic show. I, I haven't laughed so hard in I don't know how long. It was great. I enjoyed it. Oh, my God. The whole show was hilarious. Yes. I laughed so hard, my head was hurting. Yes, it was too. just good, clean fun. It was funny, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I cracked up the whole time. You know what I'm saying? I'm all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? I was <laughs> crying. Yeah, I was in 